Uh, my name is PJ Craig, and I'm the Executive Director of the Atkins Center for Culture and Education. And I want to welcome you to our second ever What Matters Forum on Housing and Gentrification and to the historic Church of the Advocate. It was about almost 50 years ago, 49 years ago, that in this room a bunch of young people who were fed up and who were tired of being pushed aside came together and decided to begin discussing how they could create the change that they want to see in the world. And then a few years later, the Black Panthers met here and kept talking about that same dream. And we see in the murals that we have that same hope, and so we're talking about, again, how do some young people and some folks of different ages come together from different walks of life and create the change that we want to see in the world. Uh, so I want to thank a few people really quickly. We have all of this tonight is put on by our Advocate Leadership Council. And uh, they are youth, uh, mostly 8th through 11th graders, who are, choose the topics that we focus on and say what's important to them. Um, so I just want to thank them. Um, I also want to thank our board because without it's not a lot of boards that um, let you kind of run with things and let you do whatever you want and focus on the issues that you really think are important and are going to create change and might make some people upset, but uh, they see that this matters. Um, so thank you to them as well. What's that? Are there any board members here? I see Frank here. And Reverend Renee is our board chair. I don't know if you might be coming in uh, a little late. Um, I want to explain a little bit about how these forums started. Uh, so our first forum in November was on the Temple relationship between Temple and North Philadelphia and the t inherent tension uh, there. And we thought it was a really wonderful forum and one of our panelists tonight, she was also a panelist on that forum and, and she kept talking about it. It's not about just building a relationship, it's that we uh, see our community rapidly changing and we feel like we're getting pushed out or we are getting pushed out and we don't know where we're going to go. And so we felt like home and a, and a discussion on housing was important at this time. I do want you to know that we've been working uh, on the relationship with Temple, though, and two things have come out of that already. So next Thursday, our Advocate Leadership Council and uh, Temple Student Government collaborated on a project, and 40 high school students from North Philadelphia are going to Temple to see Temple, to experience Temple. The provost is coming to speak, and so they're really showing that they care about this relationship. And then on Earth Day, April 22nd, the ALC and AKL fraternity have uh, collaborated on a, really a relationship building event, a block pickup and a basketball tournament together. We have sign-up sheets for that in the back. We have a lot of events going on. We also have 10 students that we're going to be taking to the African American Museum in, um, down in DC, uh, and there is a writing contest for that, so I encourage you to look at all the materials in the back afterwards. Without further ado, I'm going to I'm going to welcome one of our wonderful ALC members, Mr. Kevin Vaughn. Thank you, Ms. VJ. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the What Matters Advocate Neighborhood, Neighborhood Forum on Housing Justification. We are so happy to see everyone, and I want to thank each of you for joining us tonight. My name is Kevin Vaughn, and I'm currently a freshman at Tech Free Charter School, right here in North Philadelphia. As PJ mentioned, I am a proud member of the Advocate Leadership Council, also known as ALC. ALC's mission is to support the work of the Advocate in North Philadelphia by planning, implementing, and promoting community forums, workshops, and events that create a, youth, a space for youth experts like myself. To share their perspective, opinion, and voice, and to be heard by community members, citywide decision makers, and stakeholders. The aim of the What Matters Forum is to create, to educate and inspire those in attendance to take action that will ignite positive community transformation in North Philadelphia. The forums have three key objectives. The first is to provide opportunities for youth leaders in the community to express their concerns and ideas for youth voice and to be valued and contended by decision makers. 
The second objective is to provide youth with opportunities for professional and academic networking. And finally, to open up dialogues between various stakeholders that will lead to solution-based action planning. Our moderator for tonight's discussion is, Dr. is the Reverend Dr. Renee McKenzie. Ordained as an Episcopal priest in 2001, Reverend McKenzie has previously served at other churches in the area. In 2011, she began her ministry here at the Church of the African, where in addition to being the vicar of the con congregation, she is a chaplain at Temple University and the board chair to the Advocate Center for Culture and Education. Reverend McKenzie has received an undergraduate degree from the University of Pennsylvania and has earned master's and doctor degrees from Temple University and a master's in divinity from Palmer Theological Seminary. Reverend McKenzie has also studied at the General Theological Seminary, where she received her diploma in Anglican Studies. As an adjunct professor, Reverend McKenzie has taught classes at Rutgers University, Temple University, Palmer Theological Seminary, Lutheran Theological Seminary. She, her teaching included classes on Black Church history, the theology, racial justice, womanism, and systematic theology. So, without further ado, please join me in welcoming our moderator for this evening, Dr. The Reverend Dr. McKenzie. So I have the pleasure of moderating what I imagine will be an enlightening and informed conversation that will primarily take place with, with these four, perhaps one more person we're expecting, but we also want to hear your voice as well, as you also reflect on this topic. And I just wanted to highlight one of the things that Kevin and both PJ said, that one of the things that we're doing with these four is honoring the voice and the experience of young people, all right? And so that's, that's the framework under which we're operating. So when we start our conversation, we're going to start with the other people, and we're going to value and to listen to what it is that they have to tell us as well. And also do some critical reflection, right? Because part of what we're trying to do is expand all of our consciousness and all of our awareness about what's happening in society. <coughs> so I'm going to want to, I'm going to welcome our, our panelists. And I wonder if we can just go down, down the line and just, just say your name and just give us just a word or two about who you are and why you're sitting at this table. Hi, my name is Jayla Lee. I am uh, an Advocate Leadership Council member and I'm in the ninth grade. I attend Simon Grads High School. Um, what I do in ALC is I'm a risk manager and a reality checker. Basically what I do is I help people understand the consequences before they do something instead of after they do something. Um, my name is Marzette Howard. Uh, I am an uh, advocate leadership on the council. And, um, I go to Tech Theory in the ninth grade. I'm 16. And, uh, I am a lyricist that uh, records at the advocate. I write about you know, everything that goes on the stuff that I see, stuff that, you know, inspires me to write about. That's what I mean. Good afternoon, I'm Coyce Daniels. I'm a PhD candidate in urban geography at Temple. And my research focuses on the impact of university expansion upon local communities, of which uh, gentrification is clearly one of those that are very important. Uh, my, aim is finding strategies to address inequality within African American and minority communities so that there's more equity within these spaces. Turn, turn the button on. Push. My name is Judith Robinson. I am a native of North Philadelphia and a real estate professional with 30 years of real estate experience. Hello? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Cornelius Moody. I'm a former, temp uh, former Temple student and also um, a member of the Philly Coalition for Real Justice. I'm also involved with uh, Stadium Sombers and Food Not Bombs. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. And I'm pretty sure that the audience will agree with me that we have, uh, we have a panel of experts. And so we're going to jump right in. And we're going to start with the experience piece, experience and perspective. 
And so we're going to ask, we're going to start with Jayla. We're going to ask our panelists to address the question from your perspective, identify what you see happening in the community. Um, what I see happening is that people are, are, they have lived in these houses for years and years and years. And then finally, at some point, they get kicked out because they either want to maybe build another house another way and sell it to somebody else, or they want to put college students in it, which is not very well choice. Um, I have um, experienced a housing problem because I have lived on Sydney and Erie for about like, almost two years, and I have got kicked out of that house um, because they kept raising the bill and we paid it and paid it, but we couldn't pay the amount that they said each month because they raised it so much that we just gave up and we had moved from Sydney and we moved to a studio apartment on Roosevelt Boulevard and we lived there for about, me and my mom and my brothers have lived there for about a week or so and moved from there because we couldn't, it was too small, it was no space to turn around and walk without bumping into, into anybody. So we moved from there and went with my aunt in Northtown. It was 11 of us living in that house. At the time, my baby brothers were like three months old and they had formula and my cousins, they would use their formula to eat cereal. So we had to move out of there. Um, we moved from, we lived there for about like a month and then we moved to my aunt in Frankfurt and lived there about a week or so. Uh, my mom couldn't really feed us as much because my mom had to pay um, <coughs> to live there. And we lived in her this really small space living room and we had to sleep in there on the couch with no air because it was in the summertime and it was very, very hot. And my mom just like gave up and she was brave enough. She called DHS and put me and my brothers in the system. And we, I was in the system for about two years almost two and a half years and I jumped I even jumped from house to house in the system too so I basically moved a lot and once I got settled I had to move so I finally came back home and now I live actually up the street on Susquehanna Avenue 18th and Susquehanna and I lived there for almost three years and I'm actually kind of scared that the same thing might happen again because they now are raising the bill a lot and my mom still can't pay for that. Thank you, Jay. I've been living in like housing situations like all my life, like since I was little. Uh, like, um, but like, it, it messes with my academics and you know, you never get to settle down anywhere because you always get pushed out of your house. You know, move from place to place, you know, we get to like meet the people or friends and try to chill. But like when I got to Philly, um, we had found the house um, from where we was living. We, when I moved here, I lived with my uh, my dad, stepdad's aunt, and that wasn't a good environment. We had uh, me and my um, five other brothers and sisters. I'm the oldest. We had to sleep inside the living room. It, it wasn't really comfortable. And, uh, like it stunk in there and everything. But when we finally found the house, um, it uh, it changed. Like we stayed there. It was cool. It was comfortable. We uh, lived in there for like two years. I went to school. I was doing good or whatever. And um, like our voucher, our voucher had came up. And like the month before, they told us we had to get outside the house. And mommy, my mom was telling us we had to pack all our stuff and, and uh, pushing us. But like two days, a day before we had to get out of the house, they told us we had to get, we had to pack all our stuff because the cops was coming. So we had to put all our stuff in garbage bags. And we left, we left a whole lot of stuff there, like our beds, clothes, sneakers, stuff we loved, and we had to all put it. Back of this, um, my aunt's uh, car, and she drove us to a shelter. We 
we got to the shelter, uh, it's a big family, like there's seven of us. And we couldn't all stay there, but we have no, like, we have, there wasn't enough room for us, but we have nowhere to put our clothes. So we had to leave them, we had to leave them there. But we had to leave there and we stayed with my, um, my aunt Chrissy. My mom met her at um, one of her uh, programs. And um, she, uh, she had, she, she was cool. We stayed there, it was all right. It was, it was a good environment, but it was like, at the time, there was 20 people living there. Like, it was our family, her family, and another family. It, was, it wasn't enough room for all of us. And um, I stayed there for like, the whole summer, like the rest of the summer. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't cool. Like, my summer was real bad. Then we finally got a house, um, which is where we live in now. And um, I, I, it, we have problems here too. Like, my mom's stressed out and stuff. So I, I just want to, is it Jay that is it for Jay Lett and Isaiah? So I'm going to make the assumption, and you tell me if, if I'm wrong, that, that there are probably other students or other young people you know who have had similar experiences that you're sharing. 